Hello everyone, and welcome back. Today I'm going to be talking about the Lotus Wars Saga, with Storm Dancer and the sequel, Kid Slayer. <clears throat> First Storm Dancer, obviously. <clears throat> now, like, uh, before I get started, you know, I kind of have to wonder, like, um, wonder why is it that, uh, whenever, uh, we think about, like, steampunk, um, you know, Everyone always kind of goes to the whole uh, Victorian style uh, way with the, you know, different, like, well, you know, Victorian, European, mostly British, English type stuff. Because, like, with me personally, like, I've seen steampunk going to so many other different uh, looks and <clears throat> ways, you know, there's, like, post-apocalyptic with uh, Fitzpatrick's War and the uh, Vampire Empire, both of which I previously talked about. And then there's um, stuff that I haven't talked about, like uh, there's the Western steampunk with uh, the Weird West Tales, and uh, you know, there's even uh, steampunk superheroes, if you can believe that, with um, the uh, Ghosts of Manhattan and its sequel, Ghost of War. <clears throat> and both of which I will be talking about at some later date, whenever I feel like it, because whatever. And then, of course, there's this this uh, he series here, which is a Japanese fa steampunk fantasy. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, um, story is that... Um, there's this emperor douchebag who's, um, no, actually, I should probably start earlier <clears throat> with the usual back flap reading that I always do. <clears throat> or, I'd say Japanese style steampunk, I should probably re iterate again, um, or re rephrase that. Anyway, I'm back to the thing. Um, the Shima Imperium. Verges on the brink of environmental collapse. An island nation once rich in tradition and myth, now decimated by clockwork industrialization and the machine worshippers of the Lotus Guild. The skies are as red as blood, and the land is choked with toxic pollution, and the great animal spirits that have once roamed its wilds have departed forever. Not really sure how the whole thing is, like, stained the skies red or whatever, but okay. <clears throat> An impossible quest. The hunters of the Shima Imperial Court are charged by the Shogun to capture a Thunder Tiger. It's a griffin, I should tell you. A legendary creature, half eagle, half tiger. Like I said, griffin, but in this case, half tiger instead of half lion. But any fool knows the beasts have been extinct for more than a century. <clears throat> Though we eventually find that, of course, it's not true. And uh, <clears throat> the price for failing the Shogun is death. A hidden gift. Yukiko is a child of the Fox Clan, possessed a ch of a talent that, if discovered, would see her executed by the Lotus Guild. Accompanying her father... On the Shogun's hunt, she finds herself stranded, a young woman alone, in Shima's last wilderness, with only a furious, crippled Thunder Tiger for her company. <clears throat> uh, uh, it, it explains how the Thunder Tiger becomes crippled in the book. Even though she can hear his thoughts, even though she saved his life, all she knows for certain is that he'd rather see her dead than help her. <clears throat> But together, the pair will form an indomitable friendship and rise to the challenge, the might of an empire. <clears throat> Anybody else getting My Little Pony flashbacks, the whole indomitable friendship thing? <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Emper Emperor Douchebag is being douchey like he always does in most stories that involve douchebag emperors or kings or whatever. And, you know, the, <clears throat> yeah. And, um, 
there are also other characters that accompany accompany them. You know, there's like a, <clears throat> his father, her father's girlfriend because her mom died prior, and uh, you know, there's other stuff too. And um, <clears throat> and yeah, like this book, I'm just to start off by saying is just fantastic. You know, um, I should probably like it. Like I said earlier, like I said, um, I should probably say it's Japanese influenced culture. I should say and um yeah anyway um you know there's all there's plenty of interesting locations and um <clears throat> characters from the samurai with the sea green eyes that you'll see l later in the book you know to the um the different uh, locations and um and of course the first things that immediately caused me to start loving this is uh, maps. First of the uh, Shima Isles, and then the map of Keegan City, and uh, <clears throat> and there's like an index thing of like the different, um, there's a glossary index thing of like different terms and so forth. And I always, and once again, I always enjoy these things because, you know, it just makes everything just feel more real, you know. Like, when you can <clears throat> spot a location on a map that's in the book, it just makes everything, it just makes it feel more concrete and real. Same with all the different terms that they use, because they don't have to explain the terminology or find some sort of subtle way or, to explain it. And, um, <clears throat> though explaining it is cool, too. But, yeah, I just always love that extra little bit of, uh, effort and um, <clears throat> yeah another thing that I kind of liked is that it kind of sort of reminded me a bit of Dune with the um, the sort of uh, politics not really much politics but the sort of relationship between the different clans uh, Tiger, Fox, Dragon, and Phoenix and then of course there's the Lotus Guild which kind of reminded me of the space gu Spacing Guild with their um, you know technology that they used you, you know they're the ones who produce all the steampunk stuff and you know their catchphrase uh, the lotus must bloom kind of reminds me of the uh, spice must flow and um, <clears throat> yeah and just like all the stuff that's at stake here with the and um, then of course there's the stuff with the um, <clears throat> Like, there's a th th kind of subplot with going on with, uh, like, a war with Gaijin. Outs those are, like, foreigners, you know, and, um, like, outside of the Shima Isles, and they're trying to, like, conquer them and stuff. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, and, you know, like, the different organizations and terms and the places, it's just really interesting book that I highly recommend. And for various spoilery reasons, I will not do the usual backflap uh, reading for Kinslayer, but because I'll just say that uh, because of the events that happened in the um, in the original book, uh, the whole Shima Isles are now sort of uh, you know kind of basically spiraling into sort of civil war, you know, like. Before, it was just, like, there was, like, unrest going on, especially by the end. But by the end, but in this one, um, like I said, there's all sorts of political tension between the clans and, uh, you know, the whole, <clears throat> like I said, just going to civil war and, uh, and yeah. <clears throat> and I should also probably say, like, Aside from, like, Yukiko and the Thunder Tiger, I wouldn't recommend getting too attached to uh, some of these characters because quite a few of them die. You know, just just FYI. <clears throat> anyway, um, my uh, total uh, rating for this is a full-on 5 out of 5. Highly recommended. Def it's a definite recommendation. Check it out. It's really good. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway, um, until next time, I'm going to be, anyway, I mean, anyway, next time, I'm going to be talking about a book 
that wound up getting a TV show made after it. And no, I'm sorry to say that it's not the Game of Thrones. Sadly to say, I'm still in the middle of Clash of Kings, which for those of you ignorant sluts and slutettes don't know, is only the second book in the series. <clears throat> Today is a science fiction post-apocalyptic, you know, book. And once again, before you can say, is it Logan's Run? No, sorry. This is The 100, the show, the book that wound up inspiring the TV show on the W, on the uh, CW. I'll be talking about, you know, this and that TV show next time. Until then, see you later, keep yourselves awesome, and have a nice day.